Let me ask you a question. What do you think is the most? The hardest thing to do while playing a game is waiting. The medium of video games is centrally about interactivity. It's about doing. It's about verbs. If you aren't playing the game, then does it even count as a game? It stands to reason that the more you are doing, the more activity you engage with, the more something becomes a game. In action combat-driven games, players most often find themselves attacking. Beat-em-up adventures like Kingdom Hearts had players jumping and mashing the attack buttons dozens of times a minute. The greatest variety came from your own attacks, creating the opportunity to sometimes press triangle for a context-sensitive special move. But then game designers, starting mainly in the seventh generation of console games, began taking advantage of this impatience. In the real world, motion is usually continuous and smooth. Sudden movements are startling at the outset, but still move in predictable directions, based on the thing's weight and inertia. Fast things have greater force and are thus more dangerous. In games, it's usually backward. Fast movements are considered light and weak, but slow movements are heavy and strong. Still, even in a video game, players still expect motion to follow convention. Not following conventional wisdom can, in turn, be an easy way to increase difficulty. In From Software games, bosses will hold an attack for what seems like ages, even suspend motionless in mid-air to bait the player into dodging or attacking early. More recently, in Metroid Dread, the little flyers at the start of the game will make a noise prior to attacking, wait for a second, and then attack specifically to bait the player into trying to parry the attack early. This leaves you open to getting hit, sends you into panic mode, and causes you to continuously miss that parry opportunity while dying to one of the weakest enemies in the game. Metroid Dread weaves waiting into its greatest moments of horror. Players frantically flee from the invincible enemies, which pursue the player with the incessant drive of a robotic xenomorph. But when the player is finally empowered to defeat these foes, while the Emmy looms over you for a precision kill, you must wait for Samus's special arm cannon to fully charge before you can save yourself from certain death. Causing players to wait for short moments when they least expect to wait can, on its own, shake up a person's sense of flow, creating anticipation, excitement, fun, and a feeling of reward when the player overcomes the unexpected. Waiting in games is about creating anticipation. But beyond manipulating the player's attention, waiting can create anticipation by Horror is a genre that, we must admit, fascinates everyone. It is primal, precognitive, reactive. Fear is counted among the negative emotional experiences, but is merely the opposite face of the coin of positive emotions like excitement and anticipation. You have a big day tomorrow. Are you too excited to sleep or too scared to sleep? It's all a matter of perspective. Fear takes on many forms. In art, there is even a kind of fear that can't be experienced in stories or films. It can only be felt in a game. No matter what kind of horror you experience, it falls into one of three kinds, all of which are based on your relationship to waiting. They are dread, shock, and panic. Dread is the anxiety that something bad is coming for you, preparing for what's to come, filling the void of time, but knowing that you can never quite do enough to be ready. Dread is the long and slow feeling of waiting. Shock is the moment that the threat arrives, the suddenness with which it appears. The body convulses not knowing what to do, but knowing it has to do something. So I know it's me. Yes, this is a jump scare. But beyond a cheap trick played on the apish part of your mind, it can be timed to steal away that deep breath a person may use to calm their dread. It steals away a person's opportunity to wait. While the jump itself 
is the painful feeling of the body waiting for the rational mind to catch up and tell the body what to do. Finally, there is panic. The threat is here and you must act. Move, don't think, choose, can't think, now act. To wait is death, the world won't let you. Panic means to be devoid of waiting. Only a game can engage an audience in the action of panic. These feelings are the three-act play of fear. They happen one after the other or in any order when wielded by master storytellers. Take, for example, the survival horror genre of games. Horror games may be a staple of the medium, but more people are willing to play survival horror games over other subgenres of video game horror. This is because in these games you have power. You can act. You have the strength of a boldly spoken verb, hit. Shoot, but these games wield your strength against you. That power emboldens your panic when the threat arrives. You spend all of your resources trying to survive, so that once you kill the threat, you look at what you have left and realize it's not enough. You'll need more for next time. But who knows when next time will come? You need more resources. In survival horror, victory over panic gives you a reason to dread. And so our three-act play begins anew. The stage is set. The curtains rise. Lights. Camera. Gaming as an action-based activity can also just be about creating experiences, and many experiences involve not doing anything intentionally, like meditating or bathing. Quiet moments help us to appreciate what we've done, what we have left to do, and what we are doing right now. Humans experience time in a weird and subjective way. When a lot of things are happening, when we are excited and having fun, time seems to move as fast as we do. There is just never enough time to finish everything that needs or wants doing. However, when we are waiting for the next thing to happen, when we are anxious or bored, time feels as stagnant as we do. Every second is as excruciating as the feelings we don't want to confront. Quiet moments in games help relieve us of high-stress action that occupies most of our time with games. In The Last of Us Part 1, the most important scene in the entire game is seeing the herd of giraffe crossing the overgrown cityscape. It reminds the player that, despite the atrocity being experienced, there is still something beautiful about the world beyond this story. The onsen scenes in Death Stranding are used for levity when much of the early game is about extremely micromanaging every step your character takes. While the onsen scenes in Ghosts of Tsushima are peaceful moments to reflect on the game's natural artistry through a lens of Shinto religious beliefs. Even the safe rooms in Resident Evil or The Evil Within use gentle, beautiful sounds to tell the player, yes, you are okay. Now is a good time to rest. Waiting in games isn't about building anticipation for what comes next. It's about giving ourselves permission to do what we never do in the real world. It's about serene escapism. I'll leave you with an old jazz saying, something that, once you understand it, will ring true no matter where you are in life. Music is not the beats on the page, but the silence in between the 